Hey guys, this is a 1983 2204 JCM800, obviously. My good friend Rick just picked this up, uh, bought it off the guy in Sydney, and Rick has not received this amp yet. He had it shipped straight to me to get it checked over. Um, I have played through this amp. I took it into the studio space when it first came in, cranked it up, um, put it through its paces. It's got a lot of gain for a stock 2204. It's pretty clean. There's no holes you know, drilled into the back of it or anything like that. You can see the front panel looks very original, but it does have a lot of gain for a stock amp, and it does make me wonder whether this thing has been modded. I don't know. There could be something else at play here. But you can hear in the stock clip that I took, this thing starts to fart out when it gets above seven or eight, right? So kind of on the preamp game, She's okay until you get to about seven, maybe eight, and then it really starts to fart out. And, and a healthy stock 2204 does not do that. Right? So something's going on with that. Maybe it has been modded. Um, we'll see. We're going to check it out. <laughs> So we've got the 2204 in the studio here, guys, literally taken off the bench. And I have been playing it, just kind of tuning it in, right? And um, I've got it dialed in like this. So the presence is up about 1 p.m. The bass is back at about 11 a.m. Mids are right on midday. Trebles maybe just over midday, 12.30, let's call it. I've got the master, just somewhere between 3 and 4, let's call it you know, 10.30 a.m., I guess. And the gain, I've got just over six, maybe six and a half. So, you know, kind of one thirty, I guess, on the clock, um, which I find, you know, again, with these amps with a bright cap, use the gain pot to dial in how much bottom end you really actually want coming through the preamp. This is, I've seen it before, it's my Nags Eric Steckle. It's got Seymour Duncan. Saturday night special uh, pickups in it. And here is the amp straight in. I have got nothing between the guitar and the amp, and we're hearing a little bit of plate reverb from uh, the Lexicon PCM80 in the rack there. <laughs> So pretty good sounding 2204, I think. Uh, we've got the voltages dialed into a sweet spot. We've got this thing biased in correctly. I did change uh, V1 preamp tube, right? So I pulled that old JJ out, and we have a EH7025 brand new in there, which just gave it a little bit of lift, 
you know. So the rest of the tubes are as per uh, the amp when I received it. So let's just finish with a few other uh, variations here, right? So 2204, of course, you would normally, um, you know, to get kind of lead tones out of it, you'd probably run a tube screamer um, or a super overdrive, something like that, right? So I've got an SD1 model dialed in on my X3 there. You can hear it come in. I just I just pressed it. Um, I've got the level all the way up, and I've got the gain about half, like 0.5 of one, right? So you know, only just cracked on on the gain, and the tone is you know midday or maybe slightly over midday. I'm going to also bring in the Eventide Eclipse here, where I've got a circular delay algorithm loaded. And um, here's the kind of tone we're getting. Just a little bit more grease. You're happy with the changes to this thing. We brought it back to a stock 2204. We've got the voltages spot on, what I would call the kind of JMP style spec. And um, this amp is ready for another chapter in its life, mate. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers, guys. So we've taken this 1983 2204 out of the head cab. Look, it's, it's aged. It's clean, like definitely original transformers, original filter caps, um, but dusty. Certainly hasn't been kept in a very ultra, ultra clean environment. Probably been in a garage somewhere for many years. Uh, these aren't original tubes. We got JJ EL34s in here. They look okay. I certainly not, uh, haven't suffered a whole lot of heat and been burnt out or anything like that. Uh, that's come loose, I'll need to fix that. Pretty common. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look at the preamp tubes here. That's a JJ in the phase inverter. That's a JJ in V2 and a JJ in V1. Okay. <clears throat> um, look, for me, I don't mind the JJ EL34, so uh, they're pretty cool, actually. Um, I often will change the JJ and V1. I often like my Chinese and uh, 12A7Bs when you could get them. Now I do like the EH7025s in V1. We'll see how it sounds. I might play with that. The idea with the SAMP is to return it to stock if it needs it. All right, flicked it over. A couple of things I've noticed almost straight away. 10K, cold clipper, second cathode. All right, so this configuration, uh, the amp actually comes in from the high input jack here. Actually comes into V1B first, and then V1A is the second gain stage. 10K cold clipper, 2204. 
There's another 10K here in parallel. Someone's put that in. So it's 5K cathode on the second gain stage. More gain, but it's not going to be, it's not a cold clipper. All right, so that'll be one of the reasons why this amp has a lot more gain in it than a standard 2204. Number two, this 470K resistor with a 470 picofarad um, triple pica, that's the stock Marshall 2204, right? So it always comes off the low input jack, which looks like it's been replaced. It doesn't look like a stock jack. Um, this has been bypassed, right? Look at that. Someone's put, soldered in a jumper there. So that little network there is bypassed. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Um, it does have a bright cap, uh, bright cap, thank God. And it looks stock. That's a one nanofarad. Good to see. These uh, plate snubbers, all right? Here's our two 100K plate resistors for V1B, V1A. Someone's put, I'll have to check out what they are, probably 470 picofarad is my guess. I'll have a look. Um, but put plates numbers across there, um, attenuating some high end out of the amp. They will come out. Let's move down here. This uh, 100K cathode resistor for the cathode follower has been replaced. I'll, I will check the value of these resistors. Um, I found in these older Marshalls, like these resistors, they drift in value. You would have seen me dealing with that in some previous videos, um, particularly the 100K here sitting on the cathode follower. Um, well, sorry, for V2A, actually, the plate resistor for V2A. Um, it, can suffer, it suffers a lot of heat in that position, which can cause it to drift in value significantly. So we'll check all those. That one's obviously been replaced. Looks like some solder was on here. I'm not too sure what's going on there. That looks stock though. That's a one meg, one meg. Coming down here, this has been replaced. This is negative feedback. Um, been set to 100K, probably 47K in the stock amp perhaps. Might have been 100K. You get a bit of variation in these marshals. Someone in the comments might know in 83.2204 what the standard is. Um, but I will check that and I will also check where the negative feedback is tapped off. It's the purple wire here, right? So it's on the impedance selector, not the speaker jack. So that's a good thing. Um, only one 10K dropper. Right, so this is the um, from the screen supply to the phase inverter supply. Um, I like to put two 10Ks in here to get the preamp voltages a bit more, you know, JMP kind of style. Um, but I'll measure all the voltages and check that out. Um, there's been an extra fizz cap put on here as well, right? So this is the phase inverter, the uh, plate resistors for the phase inverter. So normally 100K and 82K. That 100K has been replaced, obviously. So I'll check the value of that A2 because that might have actually drifted the same way that that one probably did and then it ended up being replaced. There's your normal fizz cap there. Someone's put another one on. That'll come out. I'm going to just put this back to bone stock. Um, everything else looks okay. Grid stoppers are fine. None of this has been molested to my eye. These... Power tube sockets all look fine, um, completely stock. This, all these tube sockets here look stock, still riveted in. You can see none of this stuff has been changed. Presence pot looks stock, standard cap. 4K7 there to ground across the 25K presence pot. That's all normal. Original good old pink martial wiring. you got to love that. Pretty clean. Good find, Rick. I think you've done well with this, mate. We'll um, wind this back to stock and see how it sounds.
I've just been through and measured uh, these resistors as much as possible. Most of them you can measure in place, right? Others, because of their connections to other components of the circuit, make them impossible to measure. However, what I've discovered is that this 100K resistor here is measuring 130K. So I will replace that because it's only going to get worse over time. And phase inverter, you can see one of these has been replaced, as I mentioned, 100K. This is 82K. This 82 is measuring 100, so it's drifting in the same way that that one obviously was or did. Been replaced. I'll replace that one, and I'll replace that. The rest of them are pretty, pretty close to spec, um, close enough that we needn't worry about them. So we'll do that now. Let's check the voltages and bias on this thing. All right, that's the last thing to do before I'll do a, a tone test. As mentioned, here's a 10k dropper. I like to have another 10k here. I want to get this um, the phase inverter supply node around about 320, 330 volts is the sweet spot. All right, um, I've got that on really good advice. Good old Joey, Joey Voltage. There's a thread on Slow Clone uh, where Joey gave some advice on this. He's right. He's always right. Um, and in some of these 2204 models with just the one 10K dropper, the voltages are a bit high through the preamp. Now, if you want to get this back to kind of, you know, the classic JMP era spec, which I prefer, probably going to put a 10K in here. But let's measure the voltages first and see where we're at. So I'm going to bring my... Variac here up right on 240 volts here in Oz. Okay, so we're on 240 there, right. And the amp is at a standby and on. Let's check our plate voltage straight up. 460, 459. Okay. Screen, screen pin. Okay. Grid. Pretty healthy negative bias voltage there. It's obviously not measuring the bias, right? That's just the bias voltage. Um, I have to get my bias probe out to measure that. There's no one ohm resistors on these amps, right? Let's check the voltages through these nodes, right? So remember what I said. I kind of want 320 to 330, I think, on this phase inverter supply. 380, it's pretty high, right? So this is the screen supply. So we're getting, you know, a drop from 456 to 384 there. I will put a 10K in there. Let's trace it through though. Here's our 380. So here's our supply node here for V2. All right, 339, and then here's our supply here for the preamp for V1. And if I just trace that through, 
This is the first gain stage on this side, V1B, 244, 293, okay, that's the 10K cathode. Um, right, I'm going to power the amp down, we'll put that 10K in there and go from there. Okay, the 10K dropper is in, right? You can see that. I use the same technique as I use for the 82K uh, on the phase inverter. Now, let's have a look. Plate voltage, 458. Okay, screen supply node. Let's have a look at the phase inverter. 331. Pretty cool, right? I said 320 to 330. Uh, we're right on it there. There it is again. Here is V2. And here is the preamp node. 282. And here is the plate voltage on the first gain stage, 210. Now, I've actually got my bias probe connected here to this amp. Would you believe that at idle this thing is drawing eight milliamps okay very 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 cold bias um shocking really i'll check the other tube just to make sure these are in balance um and then we'll adjust it and we'll get it uh, i normally set these at low 60s you know 62 63 percent plate dissipation around there Let's do it. Well, nothing's ever easy, is it? So uh, the other tube, the good news is the other tube's in balance, right? So I've got, you know, close to 8 milliamps bias, uh, bias current at idle. So there I go and adjust it, all right? Bias adjustment pod here. It's maxed. So it's hard out one way. And if I turn it the other way, it gets worse, right? So... My God, you know, like whoever worked on this or changed the tubes last, obviously adjusted the bias to get it, you know, bias correctly, turned the pod as far as it would go, got eight milliamps, and then, oh, well, that'll, that'll do. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Don't work on an amp if you don't know what, you know, don't know what you're doing. So this thing has just been sitting there stupidly cold coldly biased for god knows how long so i'm gonna to have to change the bias dropping resistor here to get this pot into a usable range um let's do that now okay so i replaced the 220k this is the dropping resistor for the bias supply All right so in these 2204s the bias supply there's no separate wind on the pt it's tapped straight off the high voltage secondary. So it's normally a 220K. Um, so I clipped that out. That's 330K. And this has got me in range here now, right? So I've got 35 milliamps uh, plate dissipation at idle. And let's check the voltages in the amp now because they would have dropped a bit, just, just a little bit, yeah? Because drawing more current now at idle. Here's our plate voltage now, 443. Okay, on the screen pin, screen supply node, All right, 443, now what's our phase inverter, 320, look at that, so I wanted 320 to 330, so this is on the, you know, I am happy with that, there's our 320 again here, this is a supply node for V2, 
Okay. And supply node for V1, the preamp, 274. And let's have a look at the voltage on the plate of the first gain stage, 203. Yeah, this is good. All right. Okay. So, can't wait to hear what this thing sounds like now. Let's, let's put it to the test.